Hey guys, welcome back to our Force and Motion unit. Um, we have been talking about all things force and motion, uh, and we have covered the motion part of the unit. So we've talked about words like speed, velocity, acceleration, and what those mean. We've also looked at how we can graph motion. So in lesson five, we're going to be moving into forces, and we're going to do like a brief introduction of just forces in general. And then uh, in the next lesson, we'll deep dive into some specific forces. So by definition, a force is any sort of push or pull that's exerted on an object. Um, and one of my favorite games as when I was in elementary school was the tug of war, um, the field day event where we had tug of war and one class competed against a different class. And so forces are at work here, right? The objective, the whole objective of the game is to exert a greater force than the other classes or, or your opponents. So you can see in the picture, these students are pulling on the rope. They're exerting a force. And if their force is greater than their opponent's force, the rope moves in the direction that they pull. And so that's kind of the idea what we're what we're discussing today, how objects move and what forces have to do with that. So it's important to understand that we've talked about motion. We've talked about words like velocity and acceleration, but it's important for you to know that in order to have motion, a force has to be applied. So forces are the cause of acceleration, which remember is a change in velocity, it can be a change in speed or direction or both. Um, and in order for an object to accelerate, a force has to be applied. Um, a great example is the game of baseball. So in order for the ball to move, a force from the bat has to be applied to the ball. Um, if you swing, you strike out, um, or you swing and miss, if there's no force applied to the ball, the ball's not going to move. It's going to keep doing what, what it um what it's supposed to do, which is go to the catcher. If you don't stop that motion and change the direction of motion and cause that ball to accelerate, then that ball is not going to move in, in your favor. Uh, so forces actually give objects energy, and we're going to tie this in when we get to our energy unit, but for now we'll just kind of let that sit. Forces give objects the energy to change their motion. So that could be to start moving, that could be to stop moving, that could be to slow down, or even to change direction. So um, like in the case of this tennis ball, if we want the tennis ball to move, we have to apply a force to the tennis ball via the racket. If I have a little toy car that I'm rolling and I want it to stop, I have to put an obstacle in its way. I have to put a force in front of it that causes it to change its motion or slow down. So what if I want an object to change its motion or start moving or stop moving, I have to apply force. I want you to pause the video and just kind of go through these questions and just write down a brief example of each of these examples. So a pulling force. Maybe you said pulling a chair um, or a pushing force. Maybe you said pushing against a wall. Um, a, force is that a force that causes acceleration. So that might be, um, I don't know, you're pushing a grocery cart and you want it to speed up, so you push a little harder. Uh, a force that causes deceleration, which remember is an object to slow down. So you might talk about friction here, which is a force that's going to ca cause objects to slow. A force that causes an object to stop. So I might put my hand in front of a ball that's coming towards my face and catch it, right? And that would be a force that's behind um, an object that stops its motion. Um, and then a force that causes an object to change direction. Same example, if a ball was coming towards my face and I held my hand up to deflect it and that ball bounced off my hand, it would start to return to its starting position. So that would be a force that caused the object to change direction. A word that we need to know is net force. Um, and net force is just the combination of all the forces that are acting on an object. 
And we're going to learn that there are a lot of forces that act on just basic objects. Even um, like my phone right now is sitting beside me on my desk. There are all kinds of forces acting on my phone. Forces that can't be seen and forces that you don't even think about. Um, but net force is going to be like a numerical value that we can get give to objects that have forces applied to them that are going to help us understand the direction of their motion and even if the object's moving or not. So net force is going to determine whether the object will change its motion. You also need to know that objects accelerate in the direction of their net force. So if you look at this picture on the slide, we have two kids that are pushing a ball. If the kid on the right is pushing with a greater force, then that ball is going to move in the direction of that kid's force. So the ball would actually move to the left because the kid on the right is pushing to the left. Now you also need to know that if net force is zero, objects don't move. And we have a name for that. I'll go over that in just a second. So objects don't move if net force is zero. So now we're going to talk about two terms, balance forces versus unbalanced forces. So starting with balance forces, you need to know balance forces do just that. They balance out, so they're not going to cause motion. Balance forces actually cancel each other out, and their combined force is going to be equal to zero. So if you see in my picture example of the blue and the red arrow, these are what we call opposing forces. So they're forces that are working against each other. One's pushing on one side, one's pushing on the other, but both forces are pushing with the same, um, the same strength or the same force. So we call this a net force of zero or a balanced force. So they actually cancel each other out, and when net force is zero, um, there's not going to be any motion. Another example is this soccer ball that's just on the grass. So if the weight of the ball pushing down is zero, or is the same as the ground reaction force, which is the one that's pushing up from the ground, then they're going to balance each other out. The soccer ball is just going to sit there. It's not going to move. So when net force is zero, we call this a balanced force. And then with a balanced force, no motion. Now, when things move or change their motion, then we have an unbalanced force acting on the object. Um, and we're going to tie this into Newton's laws of motion, which is going to be in lesson six or seven. Um, so we'll come back and revisit this. But for now, you need to know unbalanced forces do not cancel completely, like we saw with balanced forces. Um, and unbalanced forces are going to actually cause an object to accelerate or change its motion. So we have opposing forces again, but this time they're different. So we have um, a force that's pulling to the right with a force of 25 newtons, and then a force of 5 newtons pulling to the left. So in order to find net force, we're going to subtract those two values. And so 25 minus 5 gives us a net force of 20. Now, if I want to describe the direction of motion, objects move in the direction of their greater net force. So since the 25 newtons is higher than the 5 newtons, the object's going to move in favor of that force. So I would say this object has a net force of 20 newtons, and this object is going to move to the right. All right, let's take a look at this example. So we have a box, we have opposing forces, we have a force of 20 newtons pushing to the right, a force of 10 newtons pushing to the left. And so to figure out net force, we subtract. So you always subtract when the forces are working against each other or they're opposing. And so we have net force of 10 newtons. Now, additionally, you need to be able to describe the motion, the direction of motion. So this object is going to move to the right because net force is in that favor. All right, let's look at this one. We have 10 newtons pushing on both sides. These are opposing forces, so to find the net force, you're going to subtract. And 10 minus 10, of course, is zero. So this is what we call a balance force. Net force is zero. So if I ask you which direction the box is going to move in, you should be able to tell me it's not going to move at all. It's not in motion. And why? Well, because it's a balanced force. 
All right, in this example, we have a force of 35 newtons pulling to the left, a force of 25 newtons pulling to the right. Again, opposing forces, we subtract. And so we have a net force of 10 newtons. And then if I ask you for directionality, you would tell me to the left. All right, so in your notes, um, one of the things that I ask you to do is complete this exit ticket. So either on the back of your notes or on the exit ticket, I want you to draw an example of a balanced force, draw an example of an unbalanced force. Um, try to use an example that we did not uh, use in the lesson today. Um, make sure that you label, you put arrows, you talk about terms like balanced, unbalanced, net force, um, motion versus not, not motion, um, so that I can see that you have a good grasp on this. And then when you get finished, you can turn that in, and we are done with this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.